Welcome back. Join me while I detail another superhero movie plot, and watch out for spoilers. In a world full of heroes and villains, the greatest among them are the Commander and Jetstream. When not fighting crime the Superman and woman equivalent of Steve and Josie Stronghold, operate one of the most successful real estate chains in the country. Their son William is expected to live up to the family name, although he has no real powers of his own. Despite this, Will pretends to have super strength so as to not disappoint his father, who gives him the talk before his first day of high school and almost kills him with a weight plate. Layla stops by to see Will and turns down Josie's offer of bacon and eggs. Friends since the first grade, Layla can control nature and claims that animals tell her mom that they don't like to be eaten. Suddenly a call comes through for the power couple and they take off for a new mission. Will and Layla watch on the news as his parents confront a giant robot attacking the city. Mom drops dad from a height and he crumples it with a single punch sending it crashing to the ground, then plucks out its eyeball for a trophy back at home. The two friends hop on the bus for their first day and meet the driver Ron Wilson, who comes from a family of soups but never developed any powers of his own. He realizes that Will's a stronghold and demands two students Ethan and Magenta to give up their seats. But he decides to sit with his friend Zach, who claims to have finally gained his powers over the summer but says he is just going to have to wait to see them. With the last student on board the bus, Ron drives through a construction zone and off an unfinished bridge, converting the bus into a plane and flying all the way to Sky High, a floating superhero school remaining in constant motion to avoid detection. Ron lands the bus and the freshmen are met at the entrance by two bullies Lash and Speed. They try to extort money from the group but are run off by the student body president Gwen Grayson, who Will is immediately infatuated by. Gwen takes them to the gymnasium to meet Principal Powers, who wishes all the students good luck on the first day and takes off in a ball of light. The newcomers are put into power placement with Coach Boomer, once known by the name of Sonic Boom for his large voice, but is really just Tommy Boomowski. He checks out each one of their powers and assigns them to either a hero, or sidekick. A student named Larry turns into a rock monster and is classified as a hero, while Zack's impressive power is that he can glow in the dark, getting him certified sidekick material. Ethan can melt into a puddle, Magenta can turn into a guinea pig, and Layla refuses to participate in the system, making all three deemed sidekicks. Before Will has his turn the bell rings and they all go to lunch. A student war and peace gives the newcomer a death stare, as his father was a supervillain and is serving a quadruple life sentence after being captured by the commander. Get out of here, knucklehead. Back at power placement, Boomer drops a car on Will to test how like his father he is, then throws him across the room to test how like his mother labeling him a sidekick when he displays neither of their attributes. He gets examined by the school nurse who claims the last known case of a superhero having a powerless child was Ron. That night Will attempts to come clean to his father but Steve brings him into the secret sanctum for the first time. The sanctum is lined with trophies from the family's conquests including a weapon called the pacifier from the first enemy that the couple ever defeated together, though Steve has no idea what it does. Due to this his son wusses out and continues the lie, while the newly acquired trophy is revealed to be streaming a signal. Later on while he's feeling sorry for himself, Layla stops by with some kind words of encouragement for Will. The next day during hero support class the students meet the famous sidekick the All-American Boy, who now just goes by Mr. Boy and has retired into a life of teaching. Mr. Boy was the commander's sidekick and has his feelings hurt when Stronghold claims that his father has never mentioned him. The class is suddenly cut short by a misfire, caused by the school's cranium-rich mad science teacher Mr. Medulla. As the weeks go by, they learn sidekick duties like how to change costume quickly, and that if you have a weapon in your hand you are to pass it to your hero not try to use it yourself. When the commander meets his son's new friends he just presumes the school has lowered its superhero standards. When he is told that they are sidekicks he assumes his son is doing charity work, and even tries remember his own sidekick's name but can't. Will confesses that he is a sidekick himself, so Steve assumes that Boomer is to blame, but Will admits that he has no powers at all. That night Josie expresses that short of dropping their son into a vat of toxic waste, he can always go into the real estate side of the family business. Next day during lunch, Lash trips Will over into Warren and causes a fight to break out with the aggressive pyromancer. Warren goes for the kill and chases Will under a table, while Mr. Boy runs away in terror to tell the principal. When Warren threatens the sidekicks Ethan turns into his puddle. Will lifts the table up having suddenly grown super strength, and throws Warren across the cafeteria. An angry Warren gets back up and returns for more, so Stronghold uses a fire extinguisher to win the fight as the principal walks in. The two troublemakers are thrown into a detention room that eliminates their power while they calm down. Will tries to resolve the conflict that began with their fathers, but Warren tells him that next time he'll roast him alive. Will rushes home to tell his parents the good news, but they both just act disappointed with him for destroying half the cafeteria. 
Steve takes him to the sanctum telling Josie that he is going to discipline him, but instead is overjoyed that he has finally grown a pair of superpowers. The next day in hero support, Mr. Boy informs Stronghold that he has now been upgraded to the hero class, and offers his future services as a freelance sidekick. Despite not wanting to leave his friends, he joins Mr. Medulla's science class and is partnered with his dream girl Gwen. She uses her technopath abilities to control technology and help him make a freeze ray under the teacher's orders. He begins to hang out with Gwen and her friend Penny, who duplicates herself to fill seats and keep the sidekicks from joining them during lunches. A few days later Stronghold stops Speed and Lash from bullying Ethan and finds Zack glowing away in a locker. Empowered by his boy's arrival, Zack challenges the bullies to a game of Save the Citizen. If Stronghold can save a dummy from being destroyed by them they will stop harming the sidekicks, though Speed and Lash are the undefeated champions and a freshman has never won. Stronghold is matched up with Warren and they begin to get defeated as they can't work together. Eventually the hero ties Lash to a pole and is given a choice, to save Warren from being suffocated by Speed, or save the citizen. With seconds left on the clock, Will ignores Warren's cries to just go for the citizen and saves him, then throws his body into the dummy preventing its fictional death. Warren walks away embarrassed as the entire crowd cheers. That night Gwen shows up at Will's house to help him with his homework, and invites his parents to receive Heroes of the Year awards at the school's homecoming, while Layla is stood up after being promised by Will to meet her for dinner. She bumps into Warren who says that it is obvious that she is in love with Will, and helps her realize that she should tell him. After a nice dinner Will walks Gwen home and she invites him to the dance, which he accepts and briefly meets her creepy father. He runs home elated with the news while the mysterious villain is shown to be after the pacifier. The next morning Layla plans to ask Will to homecoming, but he says that he is going with Gwen. A disappointed Layla makes up that she is going with Warren, then asks Warren at lunch to go with her, which he happily agrees to when learning that it's to make Stronghold mad. One night while Gwen's teaching Will to build a ray gun blindfold that she gets a call from Penny needing a place to host the homecoming committee. Will agrees to allow them to hold it at his house while his parents are out on a call and within minutes the entire hero class shows up. During the party Will takes Gwen to the sanctum to avoid the others, and while Gwen kisses him a speedster swipes the pacifier without them noticing. When they leave, Gwen sees Layla has come by and lies to her by saying that Will is avoiding her. The confused friend sees her leaving heartbroken and breaks up with Gwen when she tells him the sidekicks are holding him back. Before he can send everyone packing, mom and dad return home and the commander scares the students away. Steve is mostly just mad because he wanted to introduce the Stronghold 3 at the homecoming, but now Will says that he isn't going. Will goes to Warren's work to find Layla, but when he mentions that he isn't going to homecoming it disappoints Warren, who tells him that he was only going with Layla to make him jealous because she likes him. The night of the homecoming dance, Commander and Jetstream leave for the event while Mopey Molly stays home and looks through his parents' old yearbook. He sees a girl that looks like Gwen holding the pacifier and finally notices that it's missing, so he calls Ron to save the day and give him a lift to Sky High. Back at the homecoming dance, Gwen reveals herself as the creator of the pacifier seeking revenge for her previous defeat. Knowing that he is indestructible, she uses the pacifier to transform Commander into a baby, followed by Josie, Mr. Boy, and Mr. Medulla. The bullies all seal the exits while the supervillain Royal Pain continues to de-age the population including Principal Powers and Boomer. Will arrives and finds Zack glowing in the air vents having led Warren and the sidekicks to safety. He apologizes to his friends for the way he has behaved and kisses Layla to tell her how he feels, when Gwen's bully brigade arrives. Stronghold leaves to find Gwen, who is currently taking the infant heroes away to her own academy of supervillains to be re-raised from scratch. The sidekicks and Warren battle the villain's henchmen, where Ethan turns into his liquid then tricks Lash's head into a toilet. He then causes Speed to slip over giving Warren the chance to fireball the speedster into a wall. Layla is chased down by Penny, but uses her powers to summon vines and ensnares Penny and all of her duplicates, so Penny reveals that Royal Pain has sabotaged the anti-gravity of the school and is planning to crash sky high into the ground. The squad all come together and find on blueprints a small opening to the anti-gravity room that only a guinea pig could fit through, so Magenta leads the charge while Zack and Ethan guide her. Gwen explains to Will that when his parents destroyed the pacifier she was only turned into a baby, so her husband and sidekick Stitches raised her as a father to grow into a revenge. In a flash of anger, she smashes young Stronghold through the wall of the school and back into the gym. The two go back and forth in an epic battle throwing each other around the gymnasium. Stronghold begins to win but is distracted when Layla and Warren enter the room, allowing Payne to land a punch that sends him flying out of a window and off the floating platform. Moments later Will returns with his newly obtained ability of flight, knocking Gwen unconscious with a swift punch to the helmet. 
Outside the building Ron notices Stitches loading the babies into a bus and puts him on notice that Ron Wilson is the only one licensed to transport heroes. And I'm Ron Wilson. The school begins to descend, so Stronghold flies underneath it and attempts to keep Sky High from falling. Seconds before it slams into a residential neighborhood below, Magenta chews through a wire sabotaging the school and reactivates the anti-gravity, saving everyone. The heroes of the day unload the babies when Mr. Medulla is shown to still possess his super intelligence despite his tiny size. He reprograms the pacifier and all the heroes are gradually restored back to normal. Young Stronghold apologizes to his parents for breaking their only rule and letting Gwen into the sanctum, but they understand as they also fell for her homecoming trap. They present the Hero of the Year award to the sidekicks and Ron for stopping royal pain, and Commander gives Mr. Boy compliments for the wonderful teaching. The villains are put into the detention room by Principal Powers and the homecoming dance is resumed, with Zack and Magenta relating over their disgust for normality. Stronghold's girlfriend became his archenemy, his archenemy becomes his best friend, and his best friend is now his girlfriend. And the movie ends. True story. You're so funny. I love life. Thanks, Boom, for inviting me. <laughs> so you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks.